guys, um, I've done a um, basic homebrew episode today, but I know I also decided, once I was feeling creative and all that, that I would actually come up with a general geeky one, which today is going to be a general overview on tabletop role-playing games. Now, tabletop games are very different to the um, other role-playing game that I tend to do, which is live action role play. Now, for live action, um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that because I'll just direct you to Becca's channel which is Making Up. However, we are planning on a joint episode for this channel where we're going to be going through our personal experiences of LARP itself. But for general explanations on what exactly that is, she's got a better explanation already so what's the point of me doing an episode? Plus I get wife points for this. So with tabletop RPGs, unlike LARP or more immersive um, role playing games, you're describing your character's actions um, through speech rather than actually acting it out. You determine your character's actions based on the characterisation and background and whether or not that succeeds or fails depends on the particular rule system that is involved in your particular setting. For me tabletop RPGs are really interesting because player choice determines the ultimate outcome and how the story rolls out although you do have a games master or dungeon master some people call it um, who does the uh, initial setup of the game itself um, can describe the particular campaign that you're on and will determine the actions of the NPCs non-player characters that um, you encounter across along the line. Now unlike LARP Tabletop tends to have a mix of in-character and out-of-character speech. Now what I mean by that is that for the in-character certainly you're, you're speaking as your character, whereas for out-of-character you're speaking as yourself. You'd be speaking in character for the interactions you'd be having with your fellow characters and the various non-player characters that you encounter. However, for your actual actions you'd be dictating to the GM um, specifically what your character is aiming to do, how they're doing it, um, what particular skills they want to use and that would be in an out of character way. Now as I said you'll normally have a games master, dungeon master, whatever they want to call themselves, king of doom or whatever. Um, some systems don't actually have a GM and I'll post a link to some that I've encountered. Um, However, I, I tend to like the fact that there are Games Masters because you do have this simple person who's not actually playing it but is basically writing out a story based on the system that they're um, using, for example Dungeons and Dragons or the Serenity role playing game and they're creating a rich story that hopefully people can get really involved in. And as I've just mentioned D&D &D and Serenity, you know, there's very many different systems that you can try out there. I've tried to GM the um, Star Wars D20 system and failed miserably because I'm not a very good GM. I've also playtested for the Dungeons & Dragons new system. I've also done Serenity as I've said and we actually helped someone turn that into a LARP system for us. You will find certain things in common with all the systems, one of which is that with a few exceptions people will generate a character. Now some people have a pre-generated character um, designed by the Games Master, however some people prefer to make their own. And they'll follow the specific rules based on the system that they've got, there'll be a general um, rule book for the system that shows you all the character creation rules, how you assign the skills that you can do to determine what actions you can do, if they have any specific talents or traits. Um, they will be assigned initially in that stage. You'll find with some systems as well there is a class system. Um, certainly with D&D &D you can be assigned a particular class, for example a warrior for the combat monkeys, um, a rogue for those who want to be more sneaky about it. And those will generally have a bonus to specific skills or give you specific traits. It's also really useful for the GM particularly for you to create a basic background for your character. You know, um, how, how were they raised, where did they train. It ultimately creates the motivations that your character has for doing specific actions in the game. And there's no um, 
generic way to gen up a character. Um, it's specific to specific systems. Now some people don't really like the sort of um, more number crunchy systems that are encountered. Um, for some that takes away from the immersive role play that they like. Certainly Becca hates um, tabletop um, that have number crunchy systems. I'm sort of more in the middle. I kind of like the fact that I'm generating statistics for my character. Um, and I, I like the more or less um, balance between IC and OC interaction because there's times where I'll be in a totally in character uh, situation with LT, with the LARP system I'm in, and if it's a particularly emotional experience it is really hard to kind of deal with that at times. Whereas with tabletop for me it's a lot easier to kind of process that. So that's sort of a general basic um, overview on what tabletop is. Um, I'll go in future episodes into specific systems, you know, how they work. But my questions for you this week are, what tabletop systems have you played? Are they any good? Are they crap? Um, why are they good or bad? Have you actually run a campaign as a GM? Did it turn out alright? As always, leave your comments in the box below. Thanks for watching guys, hope to put another one up very soon.